SQQM3024 Mathematics Modeling A201 Group A Hello, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nur Ainatira Binti Rasupi, Metric Numbers 256209. My group members are Abdul Malik Ben Kalong, 255562, Nur Fatin Shahira Binti Mawak Fazli, 255589, and Muhammad Daniel Zikri Ben Hassan, 264780. So today we will present about credit card fraud detection based on hidden Markov model. People nowadays mostly use credit card as a payment to purchase goods and services. As we already know, credit card is a payment tool that people can use to purchase something in online and offline transaction mode instead of using cash. Credit card has two types, which is physical card and virtual card. Swap card in UMV machine, we call it as physical card. Our problem statement is about a victim of credit card fraud increase as user of credit card increase. Fraud transaction will happen if card has been stolen without card holder realize or the fraudster has detail about card holder such as name card holder, credit card number, validity and CCV number. So, all information about credit card has to keep in private. Hence, to detect fraud transaction, we use hidden Markov model to analyze the spending behavior of card and find out any irregularities related to the unusual spending behavior. Our objective is to identify the spending pattern towards our transaction, to formulate the hidden Markov model for credit card fraud, to determine the, probab the probability of fraud transaction based on hidden Markov model. Our scope of study is focused on credit card users among the Malaysian community. This research is limited to Malaysian community that have fixed career with minimum wage RM2000 and the age of Malaysian community that we use for our data research is 25 years old and above. So I will pass the presentation to the next presenter. So I will explain about literature review. Let's proceed to the next slide. The main focus of this research is on credit card fraud, which is to be prevented from continuing by detecting fraudulent transaction. Therefore, we use the Markov Heidel model method to identify spending patterns for all transaction. We focus on the last 10 transactions that occur and assume that all are paid using a credit card. In addition, we also formulate HMM for credit card fraud and determine possible fraudulent transactions based on HMM. Based on our three main articles, it is stated that security vulnerabilities in the contemporary credit card processing system have led to a dramatic increase in the incidence of credit card fraud that results in billions of dollars of credit cards being used annually to make purchase offline or online. Fraudulent transaction can take place at the merchant's counter only after the card has been stolen. The chances of an attacker stealing credit card information and later committing fraudulent transaction also increase. Credit card purchases are categorized into physical cards and virtual cards. Moreover, it is stated that the only way to detect this fraud is by analyzing the pattern and then find out the inconsistencies about their user spending pattern. As the methodology, they use Heidel Markov model and forward backward algorithm. For instance, HMM is the simplest and easiest model. The system can also, can also be customized to handle a large number of transactions. When the probability of a genuine transaction decreases, the likelihood of fraudulent transaction increases and vice versa. Based on the article, they found that more than 88% of transactions were genuine and very low false alarm, which accounted for about 8% of total transactions. Besides, a method for finding the spending profile of card holders are suggested, as well as application of this knowledge in deciding the value of observation observation, symbols, and initial estimate of the model parameters. As a result, the performance and effectiveness of their system and demonstrate the usefulness of learning, the spending profile of the cardholders, 
Lastly, it also says that the system is suitable for handling large number of transactions. In the methodology section, the main module that we use is hidden Markov module HMM, which is also same with the Markov change, but HMM have its own hidden states. Since we already read through some articles about HMM, we can see that HMM is an intensive computing process. So we will use the likelihood computation forward algorithm to display the HMM. This will include the objective of this project. For objective one, we will construct a graph based on the pattern of the card holder transaction. Objective two, we will formulate the HMM using the three parameters, the initial transition and emission probability. And for the third objective, we will computing the probability of the fraud transaction. Next is the result and discussion. This part will show how to achieve the three objectives. For the first objective, identify the spreading pattern towards all transactions. We will gain some transaction that already happened from a PDF, which is for a farmer. Then we will choose two categories, which are category one for gift and donation, and category two for food and dining. Each of the category will split into three price range at lower RM0 to RM20, medium RM21 to RM100 and higher at RM101 up to the credit card limits. As you can see at table 1, it showed that the list of all transactions that already categorized into each category and the price range. Figure 1 showed the transaction over each category. For category 1, there is nothing has there is nothing trained about it, but for category 2 the transaction is fluctuation through all the transactions. Second objective, formulate the HMM for calculated fraud. To formulate the HMM, we will find first the three important parameters for the model, which are initial probability, transition probability, and emission probability. To get the initial probability, we can just divide each total category over all transactions. There is 5 transactions under category 1, so 5 over total of transaction, which is 10, is 0 0.5. Same goes to category 2. Transition probability is a probability of a state move either to its own state or another state. The probability of category 1 move to category 1 is 0 0.2. To get the probability, we can just find the category 1 that listed in the list of transaction over the total of the category 1. So there is only one transition that move to category 1 over the total of category 1 is 5 then we will get 0 0.2. We can simplify find probability of category 1 move to category 2 by subtracting 1 with the previous probability, since it is only two possible outcome. Thus, that's how we get 0 0.8. We will ignore the last transaction because there is no transaction for the category. So there will be four total transactions for category 2. The step is the same with the transition probability of category 1. Emission probability is the probability of observation in the step. For example, for probability of the category 1, the probability of category 1 that have low price range is 0 0.2. So we can see from previous table of the listed total of transaction, we can see that there is only one transaction that low price range in category 1. So that's how we get 0 0.2. Same goes to category 2. And for the other price range, we will do the same steps to get the probability. And figure 2, we can see that the transition, the transition between each step. For category 1, there is two 
transition to either to its own states or to category 2 same goes to category 2 also objective 3 determine the probability of fraud transaction we will use this formula to get the probability alpha tj is equal to probability of the sequence of each observation to more understand we will use the second formula which is the summation of previous probability times with the transition probability and times with the emission probability then after we get two probability we will find the changes of all the difference between both of the probability if the changes is less than zero then we can we can assume that the transition is fraud this is the algorithm to compute the probability so for example on how we going to find the probability of state one at the sequence one we can just multiply the initial probability of category one times with the probability of category one at the medium press range so the probability is 0 0.8 then we just multiply it and then we get 0 0.4 same goes to category two then uh, the way we going to find the probability of state one at the second sequence is by sum the previous probability from both category so for example the previous category the previous probability is 0 0.4 times with the transition probability from 1 to 1 which is 0 0.2 times with the probability of the category 1 at the medium price rate which is 0 0.8 then we plus with the previous probability of category 2 which is 0 0.2 times with the transition probability of category 2 move to category 1 which is 0 0.75 times with the probability of category 1 at the medium price rate which is 0 0.8 then we sum both of these then we get 0 0.168 this is same step that we'll use for the next observation table 2 showed the alpha for both states we had already calculated the probability for both of the states so we can see that from the table the difference is somehow decreasing so we can assume that the fraud transition is lower and the union transition is higher so it can show also in the table 3 which is the probability through each mean and through each mean we can see that the fraud transition probability is getting smaller and the union probability transition probability is getting higher so we can also show that in the graph which is in figure 4 about the probability of each sequence so we can assume that there is almost none of the transition is from and this is the example if one of the probability is greater than 0 0.5 for the table 4 we can see that at the fourth sequence the alpha the probability of category 1 is 0 0.783 which is greater than other of the probability and the difference is negative so we can assume that this transition will be a fraud transition and the way we can see this from the table 5 and figure 5 both of it show that only one probability that is greater than 0 0.5 for the fraud transition probability and somehow this is actually the fraud transition as the conclusion 
The primary goal of this project is to prove that the hidden Markov model will aid in detect the credit card fraud by tracing the pattern of the transaction made by the users. During this paper, it has been discussed that how hidden Markov model will facilitate to stop fraudulent online transactions through credit card. The fraud detection system is additionally scalable for handling vast volume of transaction processing. The hidden Markov model based credit card fraud detection system isn't taking very long time and having complex process to perform fraud check rather like the prevailing system and it gives better and fast result than existing system. The hidden Markov model makes the processing of detection very easy and tries to induce the obvious the complexity. At the initial state, Hidden Markov model check the upcoming transaction is fraudulent or not and it allow to merely accept the subsequent transaction or not supported the probability result. The varied range of transaction amount like low group, medium group and high group because the observation symbol are considered. The category of item are state of the Hidden Markov model. It is recommended that some way of for locating the spending behavioral habit of cardholder. Also, the applying of this data to determine the price of observation symbol and initial estimation of the model parameters. In our proposed model, we have revealed over 75% transaction are genuine and very low warning, which is about 25% of the total number of transactions. The relative study of our result showed that the correctness of effectiveness of the proposed system is secure to 80% over a broad deviation within the input data. That, that's all for our presentation today. Thank you.